All right, this week's Ion NPI is from Ublocks. Ublocks, one of so, our favorite GPS yeah. and Bluetooth module companies. Special thanks to DigiKey for helping us with these segments yes. every single week. This is where we will show you where to get the Ion NPI yes. the product introduction. So what is it this week? Okay, so this week, um, so I checked this out on, uh, I go to digikey.com slash new and I check out the what's new. I kind of read every every blurb and I decide what I think is is the niftiest new technology of the week. And also I try to make sure it's in stock uh, so people can actually buy it, which is a new challenge that we're living with. Mm-hmm. Um, so this week we are going to look at uh, the U-Blocks um, angle of attack, the AO, AOA-1 uh, dev kit. Um, this is, uh, there's two dev kits, there's the AOA-1 and the AOA-2. The AOA-1 is less expensive and it has uh, one you know, transmitter, that's the thing on the right, and then uh, one tag, that's the thing on the left. And these are used um, to implement the, uh, the new feature of Bluetooth Low Energy 5.1. A lot of people think of Bluetooth like 4.0 is Bluetooth Low Energy. But 5 and 5.1 added a new capability um, called angle of attack um, analysis and angle of departure analysis. And basically um, what this is for is it allows you to solve in what I call an age old well trodden problem um, or challenge in electrical engineering and um, you know industrial design where you want to track something indoors and you want to know where it is in 3D space. And this is a, um, it's not shocking to people who've tried to do it, but for beginners, um, they don't realize just how incredibly hard this problem is. It's really, really hard to know where something is in 3D space. Um, so, you know, a lot of times when people think about, okay, I want to find something in a room, they think of like using a vision system. Um, I thought this, I saw this cool image from Wikipedia um, from the IBO dog because we were talking about IBO vision recognition um, at dinner a couple, yeah. a couple nights ago. And, you know, there's a robot dog and it has a camera and it can recognize this pink ball. And um, the, the ball has to be pink and it has to be round. And the vision system can recognize where it is in the room and it can use like some triangulation to kind of tell how far away it is and what direction it's at. And um, this is what, you know, this is the closest approximation to very basic organic life um, vision recognition systems, right? There's, there's, if you watch nature shows, there's shrimp and they're like, they can detect where the sun is or where the moon is, right? And that's the, the most basic kind of vision recognition. Um, and if you want to do uh, more object detection, um, some more complicated stuff, you can use stuff like OpenCV or TensorFlow. Uh, again, it's a vision system. You do have to have really good lighting. The thing has to be recognized within your system. But you can kind of detect where it is in a room. And you can also, again, you can use um, some mathematical analysis to determine kind of where it is in the room. But both of these uh, really depend on um, having the object be fully visible and it has to be a recognizable shape and you know, having very good lighting, if it's obscured, it won't work. And that, that's, the, that's the challenge, right? A lot of people have object detection recognition systems um, that use vision, but if that thing is, you know, if that you know, bowl is behind the computer, obscured by the computer, the computer, the vision system won't recognize it. Um, when people think a lot about, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, detection of where something is, lo- lo- location detection, of objects, a lot of people think about uh, GNSS or GPS um, positioning systems that use satellites. And this is our, you know, very popular GPS module. And um, these are really great, but they're only really great when you're outdoors. GPS does not work indoors, which is kind of a surprise. Not surprise, but like a lot of people forget that. They're like, oh, why don't I just use GPS indoors? And the answer is, you can't. You can't use GPS indoors. It has to be outdoors, and you need to have it be able to get a good fix. And even then, um, because of the way GPS works, you're not going to get precision or accuracy better than about 10 meters. Um, if you want to get uh, better accuracy, you can use something called RTK, which we covered. Also, Ublox, is at their, you know, they have premier RTK uh, hardware and designs that you can use. Check out um, this video, which we did last year around this time about the um, RTK uh, ZF9P GNSS RTK modules. Um, these are also to be used outdoors, although they can, I think they can be used semi-outdoors, semi-indoors. Um, and they do a cool thing that combines um, time of flight and GPS to, to get you centimeter level um, uh, location detection. 
But again, really good for outdoor things like drones or robots that are outdoor, or robotic cars. Those sorts of things use R2K. Again, not going to be good for indoor object recognition. All right, so you're like, well, what, what can you use for indoor object recognition? Well, you know, one of the things that is used now, and, and I'm not going to talk about time of flight because time of flight is still, for, you know, Wi-Fi is, is still under development. We, have, we haven't really seen anyone use it yet, although I know it's, it's being developed and worked on. Um, but traditionally, how you would do indoor recognition even now is you do something like a Bluetooth beacon. Um, so people who know, uh, you know, you have a tile or you have like the, the Apple iTag, whatever, um, those, those use beacons. And one of the things that you can do is um, you can use, a, a, you know, sometimes I say like something that's a side effect is also something you can sense. So the farther you get away from a, a, a two wireless devices get farther away from them, each other, um, the signal strength drops. And that's bad because, you know, if you're a couple hundred meters away from a Wi-Fi hotspot, you're not going to get, you know, good data transfer. You're going to drop a lot of packets. You want to be really close to your Wi-Fi router to get good signal and you want to have a direct line of sight. Well, you can take advantage of that property um, and use it for detecting where something is in space. So you see here in the middle, you know, you've got um, a, a beacon. And if you have three um, transmitters that are transmitting um, or receiving the beacon data, they can kind of use the signal strength to kind of sort of triangulate where the object is. Only good for like a couple meters, I think it says here three to four meters. Um, also suffers from um, signals bouncing off of each other and off of walls. It's not great, but it's kind of what people use now. The good news is it's really cheap to implement. It's very easy. RSSI is built into like every radio chip. You don't need anything special. Um, you can, you know, you can use a variety of different chipsets to do RSSI uh, targeting, but you're only going to get that three to four uh, meters. So what's interesting about um, this new Bluetooth 5.1 capability is, and this is something interesting that, you know, as I, as I was reading about it, it doesn't do... RSSI like distance detection or time of flight distance detection, that's something different. It does angle detection. It'll tell you the angle of where the object is. But if you have multiple angles, like you can use that again with, if you have fixed points and you know where they are and you do the angle calculations, you can use it to detect where something is in 3D space. So you would put, you know, one of these, you know, detector transmitters in each of the four corners of uh, your room, like in, uh, you know, this, this you know, mock-up here, and each one knows the angle, and then you combine that data together, boom, you have the location in 3D space of your object. Um, you know, there's some math behind it, but the, the math isn't so bad. Um, you, you know, you do need to have these kind of special, funky, um, you know, transmitter base stations, and I'll show it on the overhead, um, because this is kind of what you're paying for. Hold on, let me... So, yeah, so this is kind of interesting. So this is, you know, it's got a, uh, you know, Bluetooth 5.1 module here. It's got some buttons and it's got like an Arduino kind of shield sort of shape and uh, debug and everything. Um, but the thing that's really interesting about it is this um, intense antenna array. Um, it's got one, two, three, four, five antennas and it's got like this cross shape, which is also, I guess, part of it. Or no, sorry, that's the uh, indicator. Pardon me, that's the, uh, the LED indicator. Um, but it uses these antennas to determine um, the angle of attack, the angle of where it is. And one thing that I thought was kind of interesting is they're like, yeah, it's not distance. And yes, you can use it to determine distance by, again, doing this triangulation. But there are some situations where you might actually really just want the angle. You want to know where somebody is coming at towards you or, you know, um, we'll show the video where an object is with respect to a camera. Okay. This is available on DigiKey? Yeah, so the AO1, the XPLR AO1 Explorer, I don't know, AO1 Angle Attack gives you one tag, and the tag is, you know, you can make your own tags. The tag is really just an, there's nothing super special about it. It's just an NRF51, uh, sorry, NRF52833. But the thing that you really want is this thing, and then there's the AO2 kit, um, which is the same part number, but AO2, and that one has uh, four of each. So that's where you want to do real, Multi, multiple devices detection within space. Um, this would be really great for um, just angle, angle of attack where is something in relation to um, this you know, transceiver. 
All right. Okay. Let's and then we video. have a little bit of video. There's no audio, so you want to do a little bit of audio. Yeah. Right? This is, you know, this is a really cute demo, and they have a blog post that you know we'll link to. Um, you can see this engineer showing off. Uh, there's a pan tilt module, and there's a camera, and um, she's holding or they're holding a tag, and um, as they move through space. Again, it doesn't know how far the person is, but it knows the angle they're at in respect to the base of the camera, so the camera can pan around to find them. And I think it shows that you don't need to have, you know, three um, transceivers. You can really get away with a lot of, uh, there's a lot of applications where you can probably get away with just one. All right. And that's okay. this week's Ion MPI. Check it out. It's in stock now. Hi, on MPI.